Hey, what's up, everybody? John Hammond coming back at you with a couple more videos for the Junior CTF Capture the Flag competition. Uh, I'm recording this one now, uh, separate from when I had been recording the other videos. It's been a few hours. I managed to solve a few more challenges. So up on the scoreboard, I'm back uh, in the top 10, tied with the open to all teams. That's kind of nice. And uh, ahead of the, um, one of our rival teams. So <laughs> that's that's good stuff and good news. Um, Anyway, I want to showcase some of the new challenges that I solved, and here uh, we'll move along. Uh, I want to show off the Hacker's Blog. It's a 500-point web challenge. Um, so the, the description here, the, the challenge prompt is, Hey, stranger, I need your help. Um, blah, blah, blah. I'm trying to hack this blogger's website, uh, but I can't believe he's so good at it. Take a look. And you got to be using the VPN to do this. So the VPN is a another challenge that I don't have a video yet for, but it's not very hard to, to showcase. I'll go ahead and uh, down and get there. Junior CPF, it's in the team. And then we have all of our things. So you can just sudo open VPN to get the VPN running. So once the VPN has a connection set up, um, now we should be able to actually access that web page. So I just use OpenVPN to do that. Now I can access the, these, these pages. So here's the hacker's blog, and it's all in Russian. So uh, I, I do not speak Russian, um, nor can I read the language or anything like that. So this is kind of a difficult challenge for me to solve. Um, so uh, big credit and kudos goes out to some of their friends and some of their individuals that I talked to this challenge uh, through with and stuff like that. Um, so I looked at some of these pages. I tried to look around to see what all these things were. Um, looks like a bunch of posts, I'm assuming because of his blog thing. So I can control you and view the source. Um, I don't see a whole lot of interesting things in here initially. I'm seeing how they're stretching the background image. This all looks like regular HTML, so nothing particularly interesting there. Um, some of the Russian text, which I can translate if I needed to. Um, and I see password here, so I thought that was interesting. I selected that and translated it, which you can do too. It's just a Google search to Google Translator. Um, but it's just for like, okay, people using default passwords on routers and stuff like that. So a red herring and other posts and other stuff. I noticed that each of these posts have a specific ID. So if you go to one of them, it's ID equals 5 or ID equals 0 up in the uh, URL, like get me the get message you pass through it. So if you try and give it an ID number that doesn't actually exist, like 0 or 99, it just redirects you back to the home page. So that's nothing really interesting there. Um, but I kept viewing the source. I saw an interesting thing here in that you can comment on these. On these, um, You can give it like a name. I'm assuming a name based off this and a text. So I thought that was interesting. I didn't initially play with it a whole lot until uh, I went back to it later on. But I'll, I'll, I'll try and talk more about my thought process when I was going through it. Because I looked through all these challenges and stuff, uh, all these posts, all these messages that people have been posting. Um, and at the very end of the page that I was on, and as well as the home page, it looks like all of them, because of the footer, they have this HTML company that says Secret Admin Panel. And... This is very clearly base64 with the uh, equal sign there, the trailing equal sign. So I copied that and just took a look at it. Uh, we get a prompt that we can look at. So I had echoed that into base64 to decode it. And it gave us the IP address with a new page, admin64641, blah, blah, blah. So I copied that. And went to the page, and there's some Russian text, so I don't know what it was, so I, I, I Google translated it. Google Translate. Okay, so it says invalid username and password access is denied. So, I didn't actually at any point enter a username and a password, so I was like, what the heck? Uh... How do I how do I get into this web page? I tried passing around like uh, username variables and password variables in like the get HTTP variables. Uh, I even tried doing it with curl. I would just try and send like post data with a dash d flag and send username and password that way. Uh, that didn't get me anywhere. Um, I even tried to find. I saw those numbers were weird, so I tried like a admin dot php page, which is a thing. Um, I tried Google translating this too, 
but I couldn't get any actual output of it. When I had Googled this, like I did just Google that uh, text itself, I think earlier I saw ended up seeing like some GitHub thing that was defining this is the error message for like um, authentication not found or like wrong bad username and password stuff. I saw it in GitHub for PHP stuff you define the other language, but again that was just a a red herring. So what I eventually ended up doing was testing around with those um, input boxes, those messages you could post, those comments you could leave on some of the some of the posts here. Um, so what you come to find out is once you leave a message here, um, if you were to post it, the message that you receive is actually, uh, it, it tells you like, hey, please wait for an admin to review your message. So this Russian text here, if you te check that out in the translator, it says, please wait until an administrator approves your messages. So that gets me thinking, okay, um, can I do some like cross-site scripting stuff for XSS? Um, XSS. Cross-site scripting. Um, so if the admin views the, the message, if the admin looks at it, I wonder if, can I steal like the admin's cookie and that kind of setup to be able to see if the admin cookie has any valuable information like a flag or credentials that I might be able to give to the admin page because I apparently need to be able to give credentials to the admin page. So uh, that was the idea, the plan of attack. And I'll showcase it to you and what I ended up doing here, because I have a cookie catcher set up, which um, if you don't have one set up for yourself, you should for some CTF challenges. And I'll show you how I have set, have mine set up. Um, but it's on my, a domain that I own. It's on a website that I own, just called like my name, like johnhammond.org. And there's nothing on the page. It literally just says, oh, hello there. Um, but it is a PHP page that, <clears throat> excuse me, that, that grabs your cookie and stores it in another following page called cookies.html. So it grabs an IP address and the cookie. And I tried to get date and time and a website referrer, but I actually think I just left those blank. Um, so there's a bunch of things you can scroll through as you can see how people or bots like uh, try to look at my domain and do interesting things. I saw... I have some interesting results, like <laughs> like Pizza Imperia, and I think there's another Imperia one. Yeah, Burger Imperia. So those are those are funny, and there are a lot of these results from different IP addresses. So uh, you'll see interesting things, I guess, when you set up a cookie catcher like that to see bots scanning your 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 domain. Anyway, I want to show you how this is done. So I'll move over to that box. This is just a GoDaddy domain that I own. It's a regular web server. So I have the uh, index.php, which actually is the cookie catcher. What it does is it grabs a HTTP variable, um, the cookie in this case. It tries to grab an IP address from the server um, PHP variables here and refer and stuff like that. And it opens up that cookie's HTML file and it writes on it with a, it, it depends on a cookie and all that stuff all in, in HTML, and it closes it. And then it just displays on the screen, hello there. So it doesn't do much of anything. And the commented lines aren't necessary. See, I don't add the date. I just have a uh, period here. So those aren't really necessary. All we're interested in the cookie, and that's just how we get it. I just pass it in as a get variable when I do my cross-site scripting. But that's how it's done. That's how I, I, I receive it, and it's added to a log, that cookies.html file. So when it comes to the actual injection, that is... I have I taken a note of here in my cookie catch .javascript. So um, that I'll showcase it for you here. The syntax that I actually end up doing for the JavaScript cross site scripting is uh, just a regular document location, like to redirect them, and I give them I pass in the HTTP get request variable uh, cookie in this case, and I have it escape their actual the document cookie. So if an administrator or a bot or an automated administrator or whatever the case may be for the challenge purposes goes to this web page and they are all of a sudden injected with my cross-site scripting JavaScript and I redirect them to my domain and have them pass in their cookie, I can see it. I can log it. Um, now, I saw in the Telegram chat and in the, in the conversations uh, for the CTF, 
in like the IRC channel equivalent, um, the hint that they released for this hacker's blog challenge is that redirection is not allowed. They've they blocked redirection. So this document location syntax in JavaScript wouldn't work for me. Um, so I did a little bit of research. I talked with some friends and we cooked up this idea and solution to actually create a new image and set up the source for it. And that should be able to uh, get... And he, he just encodes it, the actual document cookie the same way I think I do with escape. I don't know the difference between those two functions, admittedly. Um, but this is what we ended up rolling with if redirection is not allowed. So this is our XSS, or JavaScript we can inject and place in our comment, because assuming it will actually read the HTML and interpret it in the wrong way, so they get redirected to our web page and our cookie catcher, which uh, you can set up very easily if you wanted to, again, with this code or um, just Googling cookie catchers and knowing how to set them up. Just going through some guides and some tutorials. So they're, they're cool, they're interesting. I think, yeah, this is even the exact code that I stole and copied. <laughs> All right, so let's do it. I want to showcase this for you guys. So let's say, like, my name is John, and I want to post in this XSS payload. I can go ahead and submit this. Oh, did I get an error? Probably because it wants me to wait some time. Okay, yeah, try to word a comment within a 10-minute delay. So... Because I posted that one earlier, it's not going to really let me do it or showcase it to you. But I still have the cookie and everything saved. Um, so what happens is that you would go ahead and submit that payload, the actual JavaScript XSS payload. And you would get the same response. Hey, please wait for an administrator to actually look at this. Um, and then you monitor and keep track of your log, which I suppose you could use mine even, at the very, very bottom. I have this new cookie that I saw from a random IP address and an interesting website. Um, but I have this, this one was new earlier today when I saw this challenge and it has a login and a password for the cookie. So awesome. Uh, we can just add these and create these now. We can go ahead and create these for the challenge because if it's just going to that admin page that we wanted, was it 641641? I don't remember what it was. Okay, thankfully I still have it. We can go to this page, and with our cookie, we can go ahead and set these up in the cookie manager for Firefox. We'll search for this domain. Okay, it looks like I don't actually have one, so I'll have to add a new one. So we can say new cookie for, I guess the password is the name of it, right? We'll set the value in here. The domain should be this guy. And the path can be anywhere for the entire domain. And now we'll set up another cookie. which is they said what they wanted login equals admin. So login content can be admin again for this domain path of any type. We can save that. Now, ideally we will get our flag when we refresh this or something and we don't fail. So it doesn't seem to work well enough for me when I'm using the cookie manager one. Uh, I don't know if I can get the domain or whatever the thing right. So um, I actually just went ahead and did it with curl, and that seems to work just fine for us. So if I just curl that address and I pass in a cookie variable now, we can use what we're given just straight up real easily. Just copy it. Oh, I didn't mean to invoke Firebug there. And paste it in. Now when we load the page, hey, we get a flag. Uh, one true hackers, elite XSS, cross-site scripting. So that's it. Um, using our cookie catcher and just passing in the cookie that we get from the admin that visits the page, um, we do get our flag with taking advantage of that admin page that we saw earlier and taking advantage of the cross-site scripting that we, that we found in the comments. So that's it.
that's how you solve that challenge. It was a, a good challenge. I honestly used to struggle with it for a long, long while because uh, I was con I wasn't convinced there was XSS. I wasn't convinced there was cross site scripting in the comments, and I didn't. I really didn't know what to do with that admin page because I couldn't get a login. I couldn't give it credentials at all, uh, at least seemingly. Um, but we uh, worked through a little bit more, and we ended up getting it. So awesome, awesome. Thanks for watching, guys. Hope you enjoyed this one. Pretty, uh, pretty nifty 500 points here. And uh, I'll try and showcase some other cool challenges in a future video. So, see you soon.